Hi everyone and welcome to Fun of Flying. I recently published a video on YouTube showing you my latest project which was a touch portal recreation of the overhead panel in a Zeebo 737-800 aircraft. Prior to that I published a video on another project that being my recreation of a cockpit in a Cessna 172. Following those two videos I've been contacted by a number of people asking how I actually designed and implemented the bespoke custom buttons for each of those projects although sadly I initially thought that it would be far too difficult to explain and demonstrate everything I did without ending up with a video that would be hours long and boring for everyone who watched it. Having thought about it for a while though I considered that it might be possible after all if I started off with some basics which in this case will be a couple of simple animated toggle switches and then perhaps at a later date we could go into something a little bit more complicated. So as far as today's video is concerned then I'll show you as a couple of examples how I created the toggle switch graphics for the navigation and beacon lights in a Cessna 172 and after that I'll show you how to get these graphics into Touch Portal along with all of the programming logic required. Before we move on however I would strongly recommend that you first take a look at my previous videos on Touch Portal and especially the one about creating your own custom buttons as this will help you in your understanding of what I'm going to show you now. In addition to that you will also need access to the Microsoft PowerPoint and Paint 3D desktop applications both of which ship with the Microsoft 365 package or what used to be called Microsoft Office. Most of the work required to create custom buttons is actually completed in PowerPoint but as we will need to produce some Im images with their backgrounds removed the Paint 3D application is also required. At the very least and my previous video applies here you will need to know how to create custom slide templates in PowerPoint measuring 19 centimeters by 19 centimeters. Why 19 by 19? Well this is a dimension that I have simply chosen to maximize image design quality and definition. Basically it's easy to see what you're doing. You can actually choose a smaller size slide template if you wish just as long as it's square in shape so that touch portal can accommodate it as a button without distorting the image. The colour of these slide templates doesn't really matter, it's up to you, but I always choose a dark grey background so that the switches look more realistic when imported into touch portal, but once created they will then form the basis of all your switches going forward. OK then, so how do we start? Well you could just open a session of PowerPoint and start creating switches using the drawing shapes already available in that application and then colouring those shapes as necessary in order to design the switch objects that you want. Of course you would need to have a reasonable understanding of how PowerPoint works to achieve this plus a little bit of artistic flair but you'd be surprised at what's possible when using this method. And this is exactly what I've done in the past with, for example, the battery, alternator and avionics rocker switches that I used in my Cessna 172 cockpit project. The switches on the right are the ones that I created from scratch in PowerPoint and on the left you can see the same switches imported into Touch Portal. I even did the very same thing with the ignition switch, the autopilot disengage button and elevator trim wheel and basically all of these switches are made up of simple shapes and lines of various sizes and thicknesses, a splash of colour here and there, plus some text boxes and voila! You end up with something that looks very similar to the switches in the real aircraft. However there are times when you might want to switch to look a little bit more realistic and for this you have to use a slightly different method and this is what I would like to demonstrate to you in this particular video. You can see from these images on the screen now how the shiny and worn metal parts of the switches are very noticeable, which is something even I would find very difficult to replicate in PowerPoint. So the question you must ask yourselves now is, how realistic do you want your touch portal page to look? Are you happy to use something very basic looking like this? 
Or do you want to use something a bit more professional looking like this? If you're happy with basic, then that's fine of course, and it's not difficult at all to achieve. If you prefer something more professional though, then that requires a lot more effort. And to help you decide, let's have a look at what's involved. To start, open up a new blank session of PowerPoint and save it to your hard drive where you can easily find it later. This will be your draft working file where your initial switch images can be safely stored and manipulated as required. For this file, you don't need to customize the slide layout, just leave it blank and in the default widescreen format. PowerPoint will open with just one single widescreen slide, so right click this one slide with your mouse and create quite a few duplicate slides for ease of use later on. Then leaving the PowerPoint application open, minimize it off screen for a moment and then open the X-Plane 11 application in addition to this, loading the default Cessna 172 as fitted with the Garmin GNS 530 flight management system. You can load the aircraft at any airport of your choosing, it doesn't matter which for the purposes of what we're doing here. Once in the cockpit, tilt your view downwards so that you can dismiss the yoke and then see the switches behind it. Then using the arrow keys on your keyboard, navigate around the cockpit so that you get a close view of the switch that you want to create, which in this case is the one for the navigation lights. You can use the full stop key to zoom in and the comma key to zoom out again, but whatever you do, leave the switch in the off position. When you have a good, clear and importantly a square on view of the switch, Press the print screen key on your keyboard, which will take a snapshot of the image and place it on Microsoft's clipboard, ready for pasting into the PowerPoint application shortly. Now please don't close the X-Plane 11 application down at this stage and do not move your view of the switch from where it is now, as you will have to go back to this later to take another screenshot of the switch in the on position and the last thing you want to do now is change your vantage point. As X-Plane 11 takes up the whole screen when running and as it can't be minimized off screen like other applications, you have to use the left alt and tab keys on your keyboard to navigate and go back into your PowerPoint file and once there, paste the snapshot image of the switch onto the first slide. If you want to make the image larger to see everything clearer, then that's okay. Just stretch out the image by grabbing one of the corners with your mouse cursor. Before you do though, make sure that the aspect ratio of the image is locked in the picture format section, otherwise you'll end up with inconsistently sized and distorted images that will all be different from one another. As we're only interested in creating an image of just one toggle switch for now, right click the image with your mouse cursor and select crop. Then grab any of the black corners or sidebars that you see around the image with your left mouse button and bring them all inwards until you have a tight shot of the switch on its own. Then click away from the image anywhere else on the blank white part of the slide and you'll end up with the cropped close up image on its own. Then using your left mouse button again Click on the new image and grab one of the corners to resize the image as large as you can on the slide. Then click the Save tab to make sure you don't accidentally lose the work that you've just completed. Following that, you now need to go back into the X-Plane 11 application once again. And using the Print Screen key, take another sna snapshot of the same switch, only this time with the switch in the On position. Then navigate back into PowerPoint again and repeat the whole process as per the first snapshot image. Having done that, you should end up with two slides like this, one with an image of the toggle switch in the off position, the other with an image of the switch in the on position. Now save the file again to protect all of your hard work. Once you've done this, you now need to export these PowerPoint images and save them both as PNG photographic image files so that they're ready for the next stage which is to completely remove the background of each image leaving the bit that we're really interested in that being the toggle switches themselves. To do this click on the file tab top, top left of screen to get to the save as option. 
Depending on which version of PowerPoint you have, access to the Save As option may be different from mine. But either way, we need to save these PowerPoint images as PNG format files in a separate folder on your hard drive and you will need to choose where this folder is going to be located. When you press the Save button, you will be asked if you want to save all of the slides or just this one. As far as this is concerned, try to get into the habit of selecting the All Slides option. As all future slides and images that you create and export from this PowerPoint presentation will always end up in the same folder. Believe me, it's just easier and tidier to do it that way. So now you should open the File Explorer application and find the folder that PowerPoint created with the two switch images inside it. Something like that you can see on the screen now. Having done that, we need to go on to the next stage on editing these images one at a time in order to remove the backgrounds of each, leaving images of the toggle switches completely on their own. And for this, we need to use another Microsoft desktop application called Paint 3D. To do this, right mouse click on the first image then click the Open With option from the drop-down box and then click on the Paint 3D option from the next drop-down box and a session of Paint 3D will open with your image already loaded. So here we are then in Paint 3D with the image loaded as suggested just now. And the image includes the nice shiny metallic part of the toggle switch itself, the black background that was a uh, part of the snapshot that you took in the aircraft and even this white background here which is the PowerPoint slide that you initially put this image on. <clears throat> now we need to get rid of all this white stuff and there's all this black stuff around here so that we're just literally left with this metallic looking tool switch. So the first thing we do is click on crop, bring these this uh, white line in as close as possible to the image that we want i.e. the toggle switch and then I'm going to click done and that will remove instantly everything outside of that white box like so but we're not finished yet because we've got to get rid of all this black stuff here and uh, that's where this application comes in handy we're going to click on magic select and it's going to put this blue line around the image here first of all. The reason it's put it there is because it's looking for changes in colour. So it found this black rectangle here and everything outside of it was another colour so it assumes that that whole rectangle is the image but it isn't. The image is going to be this silver metallic -y looking toggle switch. So we need to do a little bit more here. So the first thing we're going to do is to click next. Now this is the magic part of this application because it's looked at the difference now between the black here and the silver of the toggle switch itself and it's done a pretty good job. The only bit that it seems to have had a problem with is this bit here and we want to remove that. So go up here on the right to click on remove and you just get your cursor, press the left um, mouse button down, drag the cursor through that bit there, doesn't matter how fancy it is and it's gone almost, so we'll just get rid of a little bit more. There it is. So that's good enough uh, for your image. So we click on Done, and there it is. So you click with your left mouse button here, drag that to one side. That's the image we're actually after. None of this black stuff. So you come up here, left mouse button again, click down, and then hold it down and then draw this black and white line around the black image that we don't want and then we click on this dustbin lid and that's all the black gone. Click up here to canvas, transparent canvas on and all of that as all of that white stuff is all gone now as well. So we go back over here click on this till you get that crosshairs uh, left mouse button again and drag that image over to here making sure that the image is completely within the white lines of that box. And you go up here, 
menu save as image png image and save and we're going to put this back in the folder where your original images were put by PowerPoint. And we're going to give this a name toggle switch one and then click on save and that's the first bit done. So now we're going to close Paint 3D for the moment. Um, if it asks you to save or don't save then just click on don't save. You've already got a copy of the image so you don't need another one. So click on don't save and there it is. That's the image. Now it shows white around here but when you import this image into PowerPoint again in, an, in another file then all you're going to see is that switch like that. None of this white stuff around here. So then we go to the other uh, image here which is the switch in the on position right click open with paint 3d and there it is and we just do the whole thing all over again crop making sure that the toggle switch is inside the white lines and we click on done and then we hit the magic select button and the blue line is put around the image again click on next and it's done a pretty good job again of uh, picking out the switch in amongst all the black background but apart from this bit here so we click on remove and then left mouse button down just draw a line through there and there we are that's the image complete so this paint 3d is pretty good for doing this and click on done so we now grab that image put it over here for now left mouse button down drag the box the black and white box right through that image there click on this bin and that gets rid of it click on canvas again transparent canvas that loses all the white background then you drag this switch back into that white box click on menu save as image save and then we want to give it another name similar to that one so we go toggle and we call that toggle switch 2 done and we saved it and then we close paint 3d down again we don't need another copy so just click on don't save and there are the two images ready to go back into PowerPoint to start making your custom buttons for the Cessna 172. So having created your toggle switch images uh, one in the off position one in the on position in Paint 3D uh, we now need to start getting prepared to bring those images back into PowerPoint so that we can actually finish off making our custom button uh, to be put into Touch Portal. For this st stage then you need to open another session of PowerPoint um, and save it again with another name uh, in a similar place to where you put the your first uh, session of PowerPoint. Uh, to start with again you're going to have one slide available to you and this is in the default widescreen format which is something that we need to change here uh, because you can't put rectangular shapes in touch portal so as this will be the finished article we need to make this slide square in shape and give it a color uh, for me it's usually a dark gray so the way to change the uh, the dimensions of this slide are to uh, go to um, design here and then slide size up here and then we want custom slide size and then click in this little drop down box again down to custom and we need to make these dimensions 19 centimeters by 19 centimeters if you remember now that's an arbitrary dimension that I've chosen uh, just to make the image as large as possible in PowerPoint so that I can actually see what I'm doing so we'll change these to uh, 19 
bit more. 19. And this one to 19. Right. And uh, OK. And we click on maximize. There we are. Now you'll see the slide has changed from a widescreen format to a square format of proportions 19 by 19. Now we're going to give this a dark grey colour um, just so that it looks okay when it goes into touch portal. You certainly wouldn't want a pink one. So you click on format background, solid fill, select your colour. I usually go grey again as I said and there we are. Now that is your standard square template ready to be utilised as the basis for a custom button to go into touch portal. We'll need quite a few of these if you're doing a big project so I just right click on here duplicate 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 now uh, we've got four to start with we only need two for what we're doing oh no sorry we need four because we're doing two different types of switches aren't we so we'll start on the first um, slide here and we need to import into this one of the PNG uh, images that we've just created in Paint 3D. So uh, click on insert pictures from this device and I need to go to find <coughs> excuse me where those buttons are if I can find them. Uh, was that it? Yeah there we are. <coughs> so this is the image we want. Uh, toggle switch in the off position. So we we'll click on that and go insert and there it is. Oh hey look at that. So we're going to center that here like that making sure that this get rid of that this part of the toggle switch is within the box because if it's hanging over the bottom then it won't be seen in um, touch portal. So then we need to um, put some text in. So I'm just going to click on this text box up here, click there and I'm going to go nav. Um, we need to change the colour because you'll never see it when it's black. So we'll change the colour of the text to white and we'll increase uh, the size of it to let's say 60 points and we'll put that up there in the middle like that. And that's basically it for that one. Um, I do need to put the word off down here, um, but I'll do that in a minute when I can see what I'm doing and uh, when I've got the, the other switch in, which is in the on position, then we have to see where to put the word off. So now I'm going to insert uh, on this same uh, slide, and you'll see why in a minute. And insert another picture of this one. Now you may be asking why have I inserted it on the same picture. Well the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that these switches are about the same size and as they were taken from exactly the same vantage point in X-Plane they should be the same size and they are. But I've placed it directly over the other one so that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, press the keys control X which will cut that image Bosch there we go I'm going to go to this slide and do control V and that now has taken exactly the same position as it was up here so when you flick between this one and this one look what's happening it looks like the switch is being turned on and off and they are almost but not quite in the same place that one's slightly higher I'm going to just click on that knock that down just a bit with my key that's better you can see it's in the same place now there we are so that's that and then I'm going to select this text box control C for copy put it there on this one so it's in the same place, control V. 
now it's actually shown over the top of the switch which we don't want so click right uh, right click the image and say bring to front here we are and it hides that text now we want to put the word off down here so what I'm going to do just to keep things simple I'm going to copy that and then paste it so I'm just going to move that over so that it's lined up with that one and then I'm going to take it right down here there we are and then I'm going to change the text in here to say off okay so that text is now lined up with that text and if I just click on this box here to grab it and then control C to copy go back to this one control V to paste obviously we don't want the text on top of the switch so right click this switch and bring to front and then the off button is uh, now behind is shown behind the switch now you didn't have to do that because you couldn't see it anyway but for um, it for you know just to keep things tidy I always do that so there we have it now the other switch that we wanted to do was for the beacon lights now if you remember back in x-plane that was right next to the nav light switch and it was identical looking so why reinvent the wheel why do you want to go back into x-plane take a copy of that one go through the paint 3d process all over again when you when all you need to do is to just use this same image that you've used previously so what I'm going to do here just to keep it simple I'm going to click on this one hold the shift key down to select that one as well so you've now got both of these connect, uh, selected right click duplicate slide this is the quickest way of doing it and you click on this one go back into that text box change this for beacon like that and there uh, there we are and change that one to beacon there we are now you've got your nav lights in the off and on position and you've got your beacon lights in the on and off position and we're ready now to save these as PNG format files and then those are the ones that will be uh, imported into touch portal so we'll save this first and then I'm going to save this uh, these images as a PNG file like that and I'm going to put my uh, my PNG images in the same folder that the other ones are so I click on save all slides okay so now what we want is to find those slides so they were in here there they are those are the ones that I've just created so they were in paint 3d or uh, created by paint 3d I've imported them into power another PowerPoint file I've saved those now as PNG photographic files and these are the ones that will go now into touch portal okay so here we are in touch portal and this uh, page is is a test page for me uh, to create to some of my custom buttons don't worry about any of these these are the ones I created for previous videos that I've posted on YouTube uh, and can be ignored for now the layout of all of my pages um, uh, which are certainly the case for the Zebo 737 and the Cessna cockpit um, projects that I did I have a grid setting of 11 uh, columns wide and seven rows deep so that's 11 that way seven that way I don't have a grid margin I don't have any button spacing and I actually group all my buttons together you can you can maximize the space which separates them slightly or you can group them all together which is what I do
So we're going to click down here, doesn't matter which one, but for this, for the purpose of this. So you go down to there, to here, click on icon full button size, change icon from your computer. You're not working from anybody's icon packs at this stage. And this is the one we want, the nav light switch in the off position. Select it and open. And there is the one that we've just created in Paint 3D and PowerPoint. Touch portal assumes that any switch you put in is in the off position initially, which ours is, so that's fine. You don't need to do anything else here, um, but what we do need to do is give some instructions to this switch so that when you press the button on your iPad, it, it actually does something. And what we're looking for is an if statement and an else statement. The else goes in there. So basically, press this on your iPad here, and if the switch is so and so do something if it's something else do something else so we'll work through that so if the button state is off which it is then change the button state to on simple as that then we need to issue some instructions to explain when we've pressed this button on your ipad so we want a low level key press and for navigation lights uh, I've set it up with the keyboard command E. So we add that and we put that in there. Now that will be enough to change or to um, move the switch in X plane. And what I also like to do is to change the, the um, visuals on your iPad as well. So it makes it look as though the switch is going from off to on and back again so we here we go down here to change button visuals and we're going to change the icon from the off position to the on position so change icon to full button size change icon from your computer and we want that one where the switch is in the on position add that and there it is and we just move that up there then we need to tell this, um, the uh, explain what to do uh, when you press that button again. Um, and we're going to, uh, where are we? Uh, change button state. Let me put that in there. Um, this time we're going to turn it off again. And But we do need to send a, um, a keyboard command back to explain to turn the switch off again so it's another low level key press e again on the keyboard command because it's a toggle it's a, e is the instruction to, to toggle the nav light switch put that there and we're going to change the visuals again so that it shows the switch in the off position change icon to full button size icon from computer and we want it on the off position there and add and we put that there so what that's doing it's starting uh, the switch is starting in the off position when you press the button on your ipad it's going to do uh, to be switched on it's going to send a keyboard command of e to operate the switch in the cockpit in x plane and it's going to change the graphic to the on position on your ipad press it again it will set the switch to the off position it will send a keyboard command E to do that in the aircraft and it will change the graphic on your iPad as well. And I think that is all you need to do for that one. And now we're going to uh, do the same thing again, but we're going to use, uh, we're going to do this for the beacon light switch, change icon from computer, start with the beacon light switch in the off position. Now we're going to, we want to get some text, uh, some instructions, I should say, in here so that when you press this on your iPad, it actually does something in X-Plane. Now, rather than um, add all those instructions from scratch again, what I do, to, it's a bit of a cheat, but it makes life a lot easier, is just save that for now. Go back in this one, holding your left control key down, select each of these like so do, 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 and not forgetting the one at the bottom do and then right mouse key 
copy all selected actions. There we are. So we can just cancel that, that's all safe in there. So then you go back into your beacon light switch, right click, paste all copied actions, and voila, you don't have to do it all again, you just copied the same thing uh, air back into the beacon lights uh, switch instructions. But we do have to change a couple of things. Um, for the keyboard command for the beacon lights is C. So we we'll dub double click this one. I'm going to clear that and just put C there. And I'm going to double click this one and do the same thing. Clear that, put C. There we are. Um, we also need to change the graphics, of course. So we're going to change this one from computer to that one beacon light switch in the on position like that and this one too we want the beacon light switch in the off position there there we are simple so now we just save that and those two switches now are ready to work uh, on your iPad they will send instructions to X-Plane and the graphics on your iPad will also change to show the switches going from the uh, off to the on position and back again. So just to finish this off then we're back in the X-Plane application to see the switches on the iPad actually working in the cockpit of a Cessna 172. There goes the nav light switch on off on off you can just see it wiggling on the iPad feed and then we've got the beacon light switch on off on off and there we are it all works so now that I've shown you a pretty cool method of making more advanced custom buttons for your touch portal and your iPad uh, the world's really your oyster there's all sorts of things that you could do using this method all of these here, for example, uh, were created in a very similar way. And these, most of these were for the Zebo 737. Um, but if you're not entirely happy or sure about using Paint 3D and you want to keep things a little bit more basic by just creating switches in uh, PowerPoint, then that's fine. Um, and there's a whole lot of things you can do using that particular method. All of these, for example, were created in PowerPoint. So all I can do now is to uh, leave it up to you guys uh, to give this a try, see how you get on uh, and I'm sure you'll have a, a lot of success. But uh, for the moment that brings us to the end of this video and uh, as always if you have any questions then please let me know and I'll try to answer you as best I can. Um, but I hope you found it of interest and if you did then please uh, don't forget to smash the like button and also uh, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss anything going forward in future. Okay so hopefully that's of use. Ta-ta for now.